Hello, this is Bishop, and this is a test of Autopilot version 46.850D6145. Uh, I haven't posted in a little while, and I've actually ended up skipping posting for um, one of the versions. The last version that I did a post for was the dot .41 version, or sorry, the 40.1 version. I did actually get the 42 version less than a week later. I did some testing with it. I saw no appreciable difference in autopilot behavior, as we know from our friends on the Tesla Motor Club's forums. There were significant updates to autopilot in that version, but they were all behind the scenes and for data collection. So this is the first version that I've gotten since then. I'm doing a test. 30 miles an hour, same curve of road. It's a little bit later in the day, quote unquote, because daylight savings time sort of thrown off what four in the afternoon looks like around here. I'm doing a great job of staying within the lane, not going into the bike lane, not going into the center lane. That was tight. It did that very well. Maybe touch the center lane just a little bit. Now I have to take back over. I have already done some testing with this version. Um, same old, same old as far as the rest of the features of autopilot. Still no speed limit signs. Uh, still no different icons for different vehicles. Uh, still no um, reading cars in adjacent lanes. Still no local road auto or um, local road lane change during auto steer. Um, you know, everything as far as that goes is pretty much the same. This is the version that added the chill acceleration and the easy entry option, at least for me. The more common version that people, I think, were getting that had that was the dot .46 version. Like I said, I was on 42, but I took my car in for a performance uncork last Wednesday, which was nine days ago. And while I had it in for the performance uncork, they went ahead and updated me to the latest version at that time, which was 46.8. They have now since released a 46.9, and I believe all the way up to a 46.12. Um, although those do not appear to be particularly wide releases. Most people are still on 46, although it looks like they're slowly moving them over to uh, 46.8, which is the version that I'm currently on. So we'll just do the same loop that we always do. We'll see how the car performs. The only real difference here in terms of just trying to get the same test over and over again is slightly later in the day, since now it's equivalent of what would have been 5 p.m. in terms of how much light level we've got. So I take over so we can make this turn. You know, like I said with the 42 version, um, that one was great, or sorry, the 40.1 version. The 42 version is not the one I posted the video for. Um, after testing 42, because it, again, it came out like a week after 40.1 for me, uh, I just saw no no appreciable difference. Like the video that I recorded, I did a couple runs. It looked exactly the same as the video I would literally recorded a week earlier, so I just didn't bother posting another video on it. It didn't seem like there was much point. But as I was saying before, 40.1, you know, great. It's the autopilot performance has been excellent. There are also a couple sections that I do not have included in this particular test run. Um, for example, there is a section of highway where <clears throat> the lane lines had been repainted, but not repainted particularly well because they added an HRV lane where previously there was none. So there was still a very prominent looking line. I mean, it's obvious to a human driver that that's not the line you're supposed to follow, but there was still a very prominent looking line marking. Good job, car. Um, nah, what are you going? Okay, you picked it up. Uh, that was visible that went right down the middle of the lane. And in the versions prior to 40.1, um, the car would incorrectly pick that up as a lane line and it would go kind of crazy. At 40.1, night and day difference every single time, never had a problem with it. Okay, it's a little swervy on these wide sections, but it's not doing anything it's not supposed to be doing. I probably just look like a somewhat confused driver to the guy behind me, and it slowed down when I saw that car pull in front of us. And let's see how it does is the stopped car is up here. Slowing down. Ugh, taking too long. I took over. One thing that I've noticed is, and again, this is sort of a difficult thing to quantify, so it's more of an observation, not really, you know, scientific or, or easy to evaluate. But one thing that I seem to have noticed is that when I'm approaching stopped cars, if it is a row of stopped cars, like there are multiple lanes, the car seems to have a harder time with that than it does with a single lane sort of situation. Um, also, if the road is curved, so the stopped car is not directly in front of me, even though it's actually technically in my lane, that's another situation where the car tends to break late. It does seem like it's getting better. I do have fewer instances where I feel like I need to intervene. 
Um, and I definitely see behaviors like the car starts to slow down ahead of a car indicator coming up on the screen, which would sort of be an indication, which you know shouldn't really come as much of a surprise, that the information that's displayed on the dashboard is not raw telemetry. It is a, it's a user-friendly visualization of some of the information that is being collected by the car. So there are instances in which you will see the car react to something that has not yet shown up on the display. That's a fairly common thing, especially with road curves. Like you'll see the adaptive cruise control or the auto steer begin to slow down um, when a road curve is coming up before the road curve actually shows up on the display. And that's not, you know, it's not too surprising that something like that would happen. Because again, this is, this is not like a heads up display for a fighter pilot. Like it's not that level of accuracy or fidelity that we should really be expecting. It's, it's a friendly visualization to give us an idea of what the car is currently perceiving. So we'll just head back to the loop. We'll re-engage auto steer. My recording rig kind of blocks my view of the dash, so it's sometimes a little hard for me to see the auto steer indicator come up. And we'll just see how it does at 30 miles an hour. Past the speed limit sign, no register of the speed limit sign. I have not checked to see if the GPS-based speed limit data has improved for my area. There are a lot of sections where, um, especially on highways, surprisingly, where the speed limit is has been inaccurate ever since Tesla switched which uh, GPS database they've been using. Okay, and took those turns perfectly well. All right, I think that's good to go for now, and thanks for watching.